Hello everybody. Today we'll see how to create a type form like form from Windmill App Editor. You'll need a decision tree, which is a special component that allows to define conditional containers. Let's create the first node, we'll call it credentials. And with another component called form, let's ask the user's name and city. Okay, for the next frame, we'll add another form component to ask the user's email. As you can see, you can choose either a pattern in rejects or a predefined format. Here, email. Let's also add contact for how the user wants to be contacted. And we set an enum of strings, leaving the choice between email and Slack. See, the user can select those two. Perfect. And then maybe we want our user to test if they can receive either the email or the Slack. So we create a send test button and link it to a script. As you can see, we can also add styling either in CSS or preset. As this button is meant to have two behaviors depending on Slack or email, we'll create a flow to handle the conditions with branches. From Windmill app, let's create a flow with two inputs, email for the email of the customer and method for the method by which the user wants to be contacted. Let's create a branch whose condition is the input called method, either Slack or email. For branch email, we'll pick a send email script from Windmill Hub that sends an email with Gmail. Script input send to will be the email that the user filled. And same for Slack with input user email and a Slack resource preset earlier with my Slack credentials. Let's also create a default branch that will just throw an error if nothing was filled in. Let's just ask AI to fill the this code for us. And it works. Okay, we can deploy this flow now. Okay, let's make it available from our button. Then we can fill the inputs for the flow. Remember, email and method. We can pick those right here. And the send test works for Slack. Let's pick email to test it. And in a few seconds, it was sent indeed. Okay, let's go on with our type form. We'll name this frame contact. And maybe we want the feedback of our customer. We'll add the text just to ask a question. For example, how did you like the experience? And we'll also add a slider component for our user to play by themselves and fill a value between 0 and 10. Let's say 5 by default. And now we can add a condition that will define the next frame based on the grade the user gave. For the goes to F condition we picked F which is the F component result. So if the slider was superior to 5 or otherwise it goes to another step if it's equal or inferior to 5. Let's name these steps with more speaking titles. 
so happy or not happy. So for example, for this one, let's be a happy customer. It leads to an empty frame. And then we want a custom form for happy customers. We'll call it feedback. And let's ask what they like the most. We don't want a default value. Okay, and if they didn't like it? Maybe you want to ask how we could improve. Okay, great. I think now we are ready for the last step. So for the last step, we just want to thank the user and send the answers to a PostgreSQL database. Let's display thank you for your time and also display do not forget to submit. And let's add a button that will link to a script sending all of this to a PostgreSQL table. Okay, as you can see, we can add styling to our button. We'll pick a script in TypeScript. But first we want to set our database structure. Let's create table user form from Supabase. And we'll use the cool feature from Supabase to automatically assign an ID to each added row. And then let's add all the columns corresponding to the field the user had to fill. First one is name, it's a text. And so on for all the other columns. Okay, let's ask AI a script for inserting a row to Supabase. As you can see, the code writes by itself. We can already see that the script will take as input a Supabase resource. That can be defined in Windmill, the table name, it's pretty straightforward, and the raw data, which is a JSON object with all the fields we want to add to the table. So that's pretty straightforward. We'll add the column name and then the values picked from the component. For example, for component B, which is the first form, we want the field first name. Okay, so remember, we have a special case, which is the feedback, which can be for from two components, either positive or negative. So to handle that case, we create a new background script that takes as input the two feedback components result and then returns the one that's not empty. If both are empty, we want to return an empty string. And then there is the case where the two forms are not empty. Maybe the user was at first happy and then not happy and filled both components. Then it will create a common string. So we'll connect this script's inputs to the negative feedback component and to the positive feedback, which is component G. Okay, perfect. And then for feedback column, we'll take the result of the background script we just created. Perfect. Let's add a resource, which is just a rich object with our Supabase credentials. The table name is user form. And perfect. Let's save this app by deploying it. And then in preview mode, we can test it. Name, city. Random email, contact method. We can see that it still works for the test. Here, let's say we like the experience and give some feedback. And we submit all of this. And we can see that it worked on our first try. Thank you for your time.